city volunteers in Selangor, Malaysia held aid distribution to residents affected by flood. A sophomore student with congenital condition is living a life of independence and volunteering. Welcome to Bad Headlines, I'm Jenny Lee. Thank you for joining us. Malaysia entered its rainy season at the end of the year and severe flooding occurred in many areas of Ampang, Selangor. City volunteers immediately began distribution after disaster survey to provide timely assistance to flood survivors. <laughs> The heavy rain came quickly as Malaysia has entered its rainy season. In Ampan district, which is located in the low-lying area, cars and houses were all soaked in water. At 8.30 in the evening, the water level has risen very high already, so all the furniture in the house is damaged. The vegetables in the farmland in which Peha relies on are all damaged, worrying her very much. At the time I felt terrible. I couldn't think anymore because the vegetables I grew were all gone. I couldn't help my husband make money. Because the furniture was completely destroyed in some houses, so they have to buy new furniture and electrical appliances, so I think they desperately need this subsidy. After conducting the disaster survey, since the volunteers from Kuala Lumpur and Selangor chapter immediately compiled a distribution list and delivered necessary supplies and consolation cash. We are very grateful for your coming. You are such a big team and a formal organization. Thank you very much. You have helped me and my grandchildren a lot. I don't know what to say, but just thank you. You helped me wholeheartedly. I really appreciate it very much. The sun shines again after the wind and rain. Volunteers' loving care will accompany them to move on. With the rise of environmental awareness, some Malaysian companies invited volunteers from Tsiji Kuala Lumpur and Selangor chapter to share recycling knowledge. They hope that this training will reinforce the concept of cleanliness at the source. Tissue paper, huh? and then the white paper definitely can be recycled. This one, especially this one, this one cannot. White paper, plastic lunch boxes, wrapping paper are all thrown into the office trash can without being sorted. Ten. Ten single-use plastic for one simple lunch. In order to raise recycling awareness, the company invited volunteers from Zijis Kuala Lumpur and Selangor chapter to share their knowledge. Ideally, every single staff, if they knew about this information, it will better support these activities in our office because they will gain a better understanding and they will be uh, performing it from the heart. We look forward to such a company wanting to share this recycling knowledge. At first, it will be like it's implemented this way, and I hope it will bring about another good influence on other companies. I wasn't expecting the training to be so helpful. It really helped to increase our awareness. It really helped them think about how to do more environmental protection. Environmental protection. We think as soon as we eat something, we can throw away the plastic, but it really stays with us for a long time. Some even take 100 million years or more to decompose, so this is a lot of this knowledge we have gained. I hope that after this, I would, uh, I'm able to put what I, have, I learned today and put into good use, whether to start off with my colleagues or at home and to bring it to other people. I can see that many people in their company will seem to be very interested and really want to do it. It is hoped that this promotion, the environmental protection within enterprises, can contribute to the future sustainability of the earth. Good health starts with one's diet. City Volunteers in Malaysia promoted a 21-day health challenge. This time, they came to Kuantan to promote a plant-based diet for 21 consecutive days. The activity allows participants to eat a healthy diet and experience the power of vegetarian diet. 
It's the first time this restaurant owner prepared a plant-based lunch box as he quickly uses a wok to cook these ingredients. At the beginning, we were afraid of this food, as we were not sure, because we haven't tried it before. After that, we have been cooking it and experimenting with different cooking and materials and tasting it. After some experimentation, it was quite good. Our restaurant employees are exposed to healthy dishes for the first time. We made a checklist to let them know where each dish should be placed. The trend of healthy eating is getting more and more attention. In Kwantan, Ziji volunteers promote the 21-day health challenge in the community. Nowadays, many people don't know that the disease comes from the mouth. Diet is the root cause of many problems. If we eat the right food, we can reduce some of the side effects of taking medicine. The biggest help is that cholesterol has decreased a lot. It also helps reduce blood pressure. Advocating a natural diet with less oil and salt, orders from the public demonstrate the popularity of the campaign. I think it's very good because after all, it's hard to find such healthy meal elsewhere. It's really hard, so I think such an activity is quite good. If there's another event, we would also be happy to deliver it. When I got a report, I found that every health indicator was declining, which means I saw great health improvement. Studies have shown that 21 days can change a person's habits. It's hoped that by participating in a plant-based diet, participants will not only cultivate good eating habits but also improve their health. In the Philippines, in order to reach the herd immunity by the end of the year, the government set up large-scale vaccination stations in the Coliseums. TMI members have been assisting with the vaccination since April this year. The medical personnel of City Eye Center also came to join the ranks of vaccinations. The Coliseum has turned into a large vaccination station. Alan, who came to receive vaccination with his wife, filled in the form carefully. But in fact, a few months ago, his vision was so poor that he could not even sign his name. I'm really happy after the cataract surgery. I feel hopeful again. My life won't end here. At CGI Center, we learned that CG is doing vaccination campaign here, so we seized the opportunity to come get the booster shots. Team members not only provide medical treatment, but also undertake the responsibility to fight the pandemic. Since April this year, they have been helping the government with its vaccination drive. We will find time for our patients. If we help one, we help, we help our neighbors, our help begin to expand. Not only children who are afraid of injections, but also the elders. The medical team worked with the son to soothe his mother's emotion before getting the shots finally. <laughs> Surprisingly, it actually feels good. It did not hurt at all. Some people are scared of injections, just like my mother, so we are really grateful to the medical team for their patience and kindness. In a parking lot downstairs, this drive through vaccination service is specially designed for the elderly with spinal fractures and limited mobility. I'm super grateful because given the condition of my parents, it is really difficult for doctors to come here to fascinate them. Since this humanistic service has attracted a local media to come for interviews, it is hoped that by taking the lead to serve the public, everyone will be inspired to do good. Zhang Lingxing is a sophomore student with congenital muscular dystrophy. Since her youth, her mother must accompany her to school and even up and down the stairs. After getting into college, Zhang got a part-time job making desserts while gaining confidence. Now she's a recycling volunteer who uses her hands to protect the environment. After putting in the batter and flipping on time, 
Student Zhang Lingxing was making delicious pancake. If we want to make crispier, we have to wait for three minutes and a half to four minutes. Doing this gives me a sense of achievement. Baking desserts, student Zhang Lingxing is filled with a sense of achievement. She suffers from congenital muscular dystrophy, and with a body weight of 32 kilograms, she must be assisted by her mother in school. I don't have enough strength, so I can't participate in dream courses. I can't run, but I will dream about it, dream about things I can't do. I once dreamed about being chased by others, and I kept on running. Due to the lack of strength, student Zhang Lingxing is unable to enjoy the fun of doing sports. But after getting into college and working part-time at the school center, she finally found a sense of achievement and confidence. Most of the time, she goes with her mother. They both look very energetic and filled with hope. Now, when she's at school, she feels motivated to do things. Now I can lay my hands off, unlike when she was in elementary, middle and high school, when I have to take care of her all the time. Zhang Lingxing's growth has made her mother proud. Two years ago, her father passed away, as her mother and daughter pair faced challenges in life. Gladly, Ziji volunteers accompanied them in their toughest moments. After my father passed away, and because we got to know Ziji, I will volunteer at recycling stations. Volunteering is a very interesting thing. I can learn a lot during volunteering. Though student Zhang Lingxing's body is weak, she still loves to do recycling, protecting the environment with both of her hands. Every year, the Silong olive trees in Hualien City University Elementary Department campus always bear many fruits. The teachers taught students how to pickle olives, and the students enjoy a natural science lesson on also healthy snacks. In December, in the campus of Hualien City University's elementary department, the olive trees were full of fruits. Teacher Chen Qiuyuan had a sudden idea of bringing the fifth grade students to pickle olives in a nature lesson. Senior students spent their spare time to wash the olives and soak them in hot water for two hours. The procedure was repeated twice. Although it was exhausting, the students were very happy. Science can really be practiced in daily life. Using hot water to get rid of its astringent test and then sugar to pickle it for the preservation. The method of pickling was passed down to all students of the school so that everyone can taste this healthy snack. Originally, it was only our class working on it. Later, I thought that we should let all children in the school to have a chance to taste the emerald of the campus. After it's done, it's not as sour and astronaut as before. It won't be too sweet as well. In fact, Ceylon olive does not belong to the olive family, but they have similar nutrients. Olives are usually rich in polyphenols, vitamin E and iron. It also has an antioxidant effect. It can be taken as a snack, but better not to eat too much. Knowing and making good use of plants in life is a gift for nature to mankind. To protect the safety of children going to and from school, a group of parents, teachers and students often stand guard near schools' intersections. Because of recent accidents, it has prompted relevant traffic safety amendments, especially the speed limit regulations near elementary school grounds. Let's have a look at the peak hours around Guangdu Elementary School in Taipei City. At around 7 o'clock in the morning, the session for intercession of Zhongyang Love Road, which is the only way for Guangdu Elementary School students, is always busy. With seven years of experience in traffic guard, Frontier Huan Sun Yao has his own set of philosophy. We won't let the students pass as soon as the red light is on. We'll make a longer whistle to stop the vehicles, then let the students pass. By doing this, we can prevent the vehicles from running the red light, which is very dangerous. After confirming that all vehicles are stopped, the traffic guards will walk to the middle of the zebra crossing. And when the vehicle turns, they will not be hit. But there are still unexpected issues. 
they will often be parents with their children crossing the road here. We have told them not to do that many times, but they don't listen. We'll threaten the safety of school children and traffic guards. That is a so-called inner wheel difference when the big vehicles turn right or left with the green light. Like Japan, its speed limit goes down to 20 to 30 kilometers in school districts. Yet, we rarely seen any notice about coming near any school districts, right? To protect the safety of traffic guards, take Taipei City as an example. It offers one or two half-day guidance training courses each year to teach traffic safety and command regulations. Basically, teachers won't take our courses because they don't have time. I also think that it is better for teachers to be responsible for student safety on campus. In the past, we used to handle some dispute between traffic guards and drivers. Traffic guards need to be bare legal issues alone. This group of moms and dads contribute their love before going to work, as they also need to always pay attention to the hidden traffic risks around them. It is hoped that the government should amend the laws as soon as possible to protect them. 40-year-old Lin Xiaoping is a practicing veterinarian. She brings along her three children across counties and cities to do ligation for stray dogs and cats. Through her actions, she sets the best example for her children on how to care for animals. Put his butt on it and hands here, then he will behave, so I can do a lot of things. The youngest kid was carried at the back, while the second one has lots of questions to ask. Veterinarian Lin Xiaoping also needs to deal with her eldest child. In fact, the three children are all raised up like this. They followed their mother to the remote areas to help stray dogs and cats for 14 years. I'm at work, though I also raise my children by myself. She's a licensed veterinarian. It normally takes half an hour to neuter a dog. But Lin Xiuping takes less than 10 minutes to do that. Hook gently. Don't be too strong. You will hurt the intestines. So you have to check it out for yourself. Put it back, OK? While during operations, she also needs to check if there is any emergency situation. If she is here, we will feel at ease. She is fast and stable. She is the beacon of our team. I am afraid that they are too slow and will put the animals in danger. If they don't do well, I will have trouble. In this rural school, they just do neutered surgery on several desks being put together. Although the equipment was simple, their medical skills are very mature. Doing surgery outside the hospital, the environment should not be as good as in the operating room. It's easier to have unexpected situation. Everyone's technical skills are relatively the same. It's all because of the senior sister. You are stray dogs on the streets. In the beginning, I just wanted to save the stray dogs. So I study veterinary in college. But then I found that it is too difficult to save all, as there are too many. The youngest child is hungry as the mother finally stops her work to feed him. Just like breastfeeding, not everyone can do neuter surgery. I like doing things that require specific qualifications, just like the operation, in which many people may not be qualified to do it so I can do whatever I can contribute, even though I may not have any rewards. Passing her medical skills to others, Lin Xiaoping does not ask for returns. She goes across counties and cities to do neuter surgery, just to rescue as many animals as possible. According to Taiwan's Council of Agriculture, the fate of smuggled animals is euthanasia, whether it's cats, dogs, birds or turtles. This is to avoid infectious diseases such as foot and mouth disease from entering Taiwan. However, the issue of animal trafficking is complex. Besides from imposing harsher penalties for smuggling, the public should also think about the cruelty behind the demand in certain breeds. Inside the pet store, purebed dogs are for sale, but do you know their origins? Back in August, 154 cats were smuggled in from China, and when the cats were confiscated, they were put down the very next day, which spurred much discussion. Even after quarantine, these cats could still carry diseases due to the long latency periods of viruses, which could pose a major threat to pets and farm animals in Taiwan. From a vet perspective, animals which are smuggled in due to their unknown origin 
might contain diseases such as rabies, which sometimes cannot be detected during the quarantine time. But once it lands in Taiwan, it can cause such a huge problem domestically. This veterinarian says most of Taiwan's vets have very little experience with rabies. Thus, if a smuggled cat came in with symptoms of it, it's entirely possible they might not diagnose it right and cause an outbreak. However, Chen Ji-chung, the head of the Council of Agriculture, says he's taking responsibility for the decision to euthanize the seized cats because the policy to deal with smuggled live animals belongs to the Taiwan's executive yuan. In other words, whether in the Wildlife Protection Act, customs anti-smuggling regulations, or regulations on prevention and control of animal infectious disease, there is no mention of how to deal with confiscated animals which are still alive. The Council of Agriculture of the Executive Yuan issued a related policy in 2017, but it leaves room for interpretation. It states that if the administrative unit confiscated smuggled merchandise, if said merchandise was perishable, what they should do, and what they should do if not perishable. It gave the administrative unit the right to handle it accordingly. However, the words must destroy is not part of the policy. Most people wonder why can't the cats go into quarantine, then adopted or placed in legitimate locations. The fees associated with that might cost up to $5 million NT dollars. This includes the manpower to take care of the cats in quarantine, the location rental fee to temporarily house the cats. Where will I find the financial means for it? I don't have the authority to procure the resources. As fees for quarantine as high as 200,000 NT dollars, along with the problems relating to which authorized unit is in charge and placement later on, confiscated animals are simply fated for euthanization, whether they are dog, cat, turtle, or bird. Stopping the act of smuggling is a must. That's how the food and mouth disease came to affect our farm pigs as foreign pigs were smuggled into Taiwan. If businesses are importing these illegal cats and dogs into our country, even if they are legal business entities, the government should have some sort of penalty imposed on them for these illegal acts. We have annual checks and unannounced checks one or two times a year. Sometimes we get a tip and will head out to investigate licensed pet shops, whether they breed their own, sell or consign, will conduct checks. Every two years, they go through a thorough evaluation, in which results are announced on our website. Despite these regulations, the pet smuggling ring is still very active. It seems like the incident in Kaohsiung is a case of false documentation. In that regard, a tougher fine should be imposed or perhaps be brought up on criminal charges. This is not the first time this has happened, nor will it be the last. As long as there is a consumer demand to purchase rare breeds as pets, then they will continue to be thought of as tools of revenue. If there is no demand, then there would be no need for supply. Who then should really be held responsible for the loss of these innocent lives? Fourth-year students of the Department of Communication Studies from Tsuji University are showcasing their senior project in an exhibition, Puzzle Island, at Tsuji University. Here's the footage. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.